Hello everyone and welcome to Geeks to Geeks School and welcome to the new video where we are going to solve print one to n without loop from school's action section of practice portal. Okay, so we are quickly going to understand the logic behind solving this problem. Then we are going to see the algorithm and later on we are also going to see the code. I'm going to code along with you and also while writing the code I'll be looking down because I have my system over here. So please pardon me for that and let's start. Okay. So uh, let's open the problem and let's understand the problem first. Okay. So uh, also you can change the language for solving the problem. Basically I code in Java. So I prefer writing the code in Java. You can use any language you want. You can just go at the top over here and you can just uh, select the language whichever you are comfortable with. So I'll just choose Java. Okay. Now let's see the question and then we're going to see the solution for this question. See. The question says print numbers from 1 to n. Okay. So I have to print all the numbers from 1 to n. But there is a condition that you have to do this without the help of loops. Now if I would ask you that print all the numbers from 1 to n. What you will simply do is you will apply a for loop. You will start from 1. You will go till n equal to n. And then you will print each and every element. But here there is a condition given that you cannot use loops. Okay. Now you have to do without loops. As you can see over here the number are in this. Uh, see uh, we have given n is equal to 10. And we are printing 1, 2, 3, 4 till 10. Okay. So that's how basically we have to do this. So now the second approach that is coming to my mind is using recursion. Something that is uh, done in using iterative statements can also be done using recursive statements. But sometimes recursive uh, approach is a little difficult. But sometimes it just uh, makes it easy to write the recursive approach first. So the second thing that is coming in my mind for solving this problem is recursion. If you are not aware about recursion, just go on Geeks to Geeks School channel. There are multiple playlists. That is DSA playlist, uh, school crash, Python crash course. I see I see crash course uh, in the multiple playlists we have discussed about recursion. Okay. I'll link the playlist in the description box. See. So what we are going to do is each and every time we are going to call the function with a decremented value and then we are going to print that value. Now let me just explain you the approach. See. What I'm saying is that uh, I'm passing a number n is equals to 10. Okay. n equals to 10. I'm passing n equals to 10. And what I'm saying to my function is that function what you have to do is you have to just uh, print the uh, just print 1 to 9 and I will print 10. I am I'm asking my function to solve this small sub problem. I will, I will do this part. Okay. In recursion basically we divide the big, bigger problems into smaller problems. Okay. So what I am saying is that I will print 10 and my function you just go and print all these numbers. Okay. So that's how recursion works. So basically what is going to happen is and now the next time I will be passing n is equals to 9. Okay. n equals to 9. Now in this case uh, I will say that I am printing 9 and my function you just go and print all the numbers from 1 to 8. So that's how we are going to break the problem and this problem will end at a base case. Now what is the base case? Base case is a uh, case in uh, it's a condition in recursive functions where the recursive call or you can see the recursive stacks that grow on one another stops. Okay. So basically what happens is this 10 when I will pass 10 it will call the function on 9. This 9 will call the function on 8. 8 will call on 7 and this will go on and on. Now what will be the base case? How are we going to think the base case? So basically when my uh, input is 0, when my input is 0, I don't have to print anything because I have to print from 1 till the end. So if I have given input as 0, then in that case what I have to do is I have to just return from here. Okay, just return from here. I don't have to do any work. So I will make this as my base case. So what I will do is if my n is equal to, equal to 0, so what will be the base case for this is it will be if my n will be equal equal to 0. So what I have to do is I have to just return from here. Okay. I have to just write this as a base case. And what will be my recursive uh, solution for this? I will do work for this bigger problem and I will ask my function to solve this solve for this smaller problem. See. So let's just write the algorithm. I hope that you have understood the approach. So basically in our algorithm what we are going to do is we are first going to write the base condition. That will be if my n is equal equals to 0 then what I have to do is I have to just return. Okay. Now the next thing that will be the is part. Is part. 
So basically inside the else part, what I have to do is I will say that I will print n and I will ask my function to print from 1 to n minus 1. Now, here there is one condition. If you will write your print statement over here, your 10 will print first and then your 9 will print, then 8 will print, then 7 will print and so on and on. But what we want is that we want to print 1, then 2, then 3. So basically we want to print in reverse. So to do that, what we have to do is we have to first do the recursive call. So basically, I'm going to write this uh, function. So let's assume that the function is fun for now and fun and I'm going to pass n minus 1 over here okay and then after that I'm going to print after that I'm going to print okay I'm going to print n okay so basically what happens in the memory is that uh, just assume that this is my call stack just assume that this is a call stack and then we have a main function so first I'm uh, passing the value 10 okay so f of 10 is passing first first I'm passing 10 so here what I'm going to do is First, I'm going to make another function call on 9, okay? So, what I'll do is, I'll do f of 9. I will call f of 9 and there's some work left that just need to be done. But before printing this, what I have done is, I have made another function call on 8, okay? So, I will make function call on 8, okay? And this will go on and on till my function calls will be something like this, okay? This will go on and on till my function calls will be something like this, f of 2, f of 1, and after this, it will be f of 0. Okay. Now, this f of 0 will return because I have written this base condition, right? I have written this base condition that when n is equal to 0, I have to just return. So, it will return from here to here. Now, when I will come on f of 1, there is some code left at the bottom, right? This After this code, after this call, there is some code left. And what is the code? That, that code is that print that number. So, here the value of n in this function, in this uh, stack function, uh, the value of n is 1. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to print 1. I'm going to print 1 and then this function will get erased from the memory. So, I have erased this. Okay. Okay. Now, this function call has been erased from the memory. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to the another, I'm going to another function call. So, uh, from f of 1, I will reach to f of 2. So, there's again some code left after the call so that is print 2 so i will just print 2 over here okay and then this will again get erased from the memory then i will come on f of 3 and that's how we are going to print 3 4 5 and so on and on till 10 okay when i will reach to the last part here i'm going to just print 10 and then i will go back to the main so basically this is the logic or you can say the algorithm behind solving this problem okay now let's start writing the code for this Okay, so uh, basically what we are going to do is we are, we are first going to write a base condition. The base condition is if our n is equal equals to 0, then what we have to do is we just have to return from here. We don't have to return anything because you can see, as you can see in the function declaration we have written void as a return type. So we don't have to return any number from here. Okay, else what we have to do is. Else what we have to do is we have to make another call on a smaller number. So print and we are going to use the same name of the function. As you know this is the condition for recursion and I am going to decrease the value of n by 1. Okay. n minus 1. Okay. And after this I have to write a print statement. So system dot out dot print and here I just have to write the value of n and then a space again don't forget a space over here otherwise it will all together the uh, format of the output will not be same now let's do one thing let's just uh, run this and let's see if it is working or not okay so i will just compile and run this and then later on i'm just going to submit this okay so you can see okay you can see we are getting a uh, compilation completed we are getting the right answer also let's just submit this you can see the submit button is over here and it is going to check for all the test cases first. So yes, you can see all the test cases have been passed and it is perfectly solved. So I hope that you like this video. If you do, please click on the like button. Please subscribe to our channel and also don't forget to connect us on the Discord channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye everyone.